These postcards document the birth of a new era, fraught with both scientific marvel and devastating destruction. They serve as a visual reminders of the complex moral and political dilemmas faced during World War II and this Cold War. Welcome back to Awesome Postcards. Today, this channel is going nuclear. We have a special topic of atomic bomb postcards. Yeah, there's atomic bombs, mushroom clouds, and different things on postcards, and they do they do pretty well. As we'll get into the sell through rates and the pricing of those, and a little history about the atomic bomb. But before that, I'm going to do what's sold. I sold 12 cards today that we'll run through real quick, and I'll talk about them. And then the poll. How do you prepare your eBay shipping label? Do you cut and paste tape on there? Do you use a thermal printer? Do you... Whatever you do. But what, I'll talk about that subject a little bit. And I took most of the comments that came in because there's two pieces of equipment that are... If you're going to get into postcards and selling, it can suck a lot of time out of you by rinse and repeat and doing so many of them because you got to have quantity sometimes if you're doing that model. If you're doing the harder to find ones, the real photos, you're going to spend a lot of time on researching. Do you want to spend it on printing or writing out labels? So you got to find places to cut time. But there's reasons why people don't do that yet. And we'll talk about that in the poll. And then I got uh, about five viewer comments and I'll go through. And one of them from Ashley talks about why she bought some postcards from me. And that's probably one of the biggest reasons I do this is exactly what she says in that message. But let me go ahead and start on to what's sold today. I'll run through these real quick and talk about them. The first one sold was USS Missouri BB-11. Semi-gloss front, matte back, just a color picture. Looks like a kind of an artist drawing of it. 475. Then we sold a ship photo. This is the Essex CV-9 aircraft carrier, a photo, and it says about December 1945, approximate date, person bought that. There's a lot of information on the back. I got these from the club, and this sold for $7.70. I usually sell them for $8.55, but I probably sent an offer to the person, and they bought it. Next was another two Navy ships of the, the John F. Kennedy aircraft carrier in the North naval base. Look at that. And the lights at night, how big these things are. These are two of the same card. I probably have about 80 to 100 of these left. These are continental size. They're from a publisher. They didn't print these. So they bought two of these for $9.50. Next one is some of those painting cards of the trains and stuff. They didn't do too bad, I guess. I didn't list them all. They look like they were torn out of a kind of a book or something but it's from the Central Railroad Line. They're like paintings or something up there. And this sold for $4.75. Sold another ship, USS California. Standard card, publisher card, Chrome, $4.75. And then Commodore Murray Hotel. Not for sure where this is. Maybe New York. But it's a Chrome card. It's a newer card. It's a, it looks like it's a reprint or redone photo on there. It doesn't say... In there, but it's a vertical card. Hotel, 475. Then I sold the King, Elvis trading cards. I got these off my father-in-law's table. I think at the flea market for nothing, and I think I've almost sold out of all of them. I sold that for 475. And I'll end up using, continue to use that case of eBay trading card kit thing where you put the three things in there. I got to use them up. I, I, there's examples in the Ko-Fi store that if you just want to order one, it's whatever the cost it cost me to mail it to you. But I got a whole case of them. I wanted to. I was curious about them, and I bought a whole case of like a 50 or 100. So I might as well use them up. So that'll go in there. This card card sold for four seven sixty five. Elvis sold for four seventy five. This is the T and O C Railroad Shops, Buck Buckry Russ Ohio. Nice looking card, sold for $7.65. Divide it back. Got a pole there. It's got the train yard and buildings. $7.65. At the auction the other night, I ended up getting like about 80, about 100 Garbage Pail Kid cards from Series 3. This is Starin' Darren. 
Another trading card I'll go in one of those little eBay trading kits to get rid of it. He sold for four seventy five. dollars All of those, I could have sold that as a set, because I had them all. And the sets go between anywhere from $50 to $80 on the high side. And they were in good condition, or I can sell them singly. And if I sell all of these for, say, $4, that's $400. I only paid $40. I paid up a little bit. you got to pay up at this auction sometimes. But I wanted, I was getting a little low. I only had like a dozen garbage pail kits left, so I listed all these. Within 48 hours, I've sold two of them. And there's a ton of these out there on uh, eBay, and I sold two of them. That sold for $4.75. This is a dam. I got into a stack on my cards here of dams. I must have got into someone's collection that did dams. This is the Silver Lake and Falls, Rochester, Minnesota. Dam. Probably put a good 100 of those things up. 75 to 100 but that sold for 475 and the last card that I sold was a photo not a card this is the Helena USS Helena CA 75 from World War II looks like a battleship or a destroyer or something it's a photo and this sold for 770 so that was an offer so all together my goal this year was 16 cards a day I only did 12 so I'm down four the other day I did more so kind of, I look at the average for a month and a quarter, six months, nine months. Total of all these cards together was 68.93, and then if I divide 68.93 divided by 12, I come up with a 574 ASP. It's still moving, creeping up a little bit. Had a couple things in Ko-Fi. I think someone downloaded the printer settings, the Epson scanner settings, and they donated two dollars to the thing. So Kofi is up and down. It's not. It's a part of my business, but it's a small piece on the side for in there because I don't make a lot of money in there. It covers the expenses enough to buy some stuff and a little bit for the channel, but it's more for the resellers. It's where I wanted to go. I can't give it away because I got to pay the taxes. I got to pay PayPal and stuff like that. But I think I got maybe five dollars yesterday in Kofi, but I'm not. I don't put that into my goal or whatever it's whatever it does over there. it's just inventory sitting there so my total was 68.93 so 70 dollars for today i want to do 80 dollars a day this year i'm way above that average since january january 1st i'm above that i have a lot of room in there my profits above what i was estimating my asp is uh raising and my profit per day and so like that the only thing with it is the cards per day. I'm, a, I'm about 14 cards per day right now as of what I sold today. Not 16, but I'm close enough to the target. I think I got a good stretch goal there. So we're still moving. But it mean, what that means too is I'm getting a little bit more for each card and I had to do that, raise it up a little bit because I got rid of all the other stuff and all the other sites. So I needed to raise my up a little bit to cover some of that. But also my expenses are so low anymore. It's ridiculous. But that's what's sold. Special topic. Atomic bomb postcards. Nuclear bombs and whatever. There's postcards out there. There's one that you're going to see with Las Vegas and it's got the bomb and mushroom cloud in the back. And we're going to talk about a little bit of history. I got about three or four paragraphs and one fact that I thought was interesting about atomic bombs. It's set a foundation. Just understand it. I know there's a new movie out, Oppenheimer. I haven't watched it yet about it and the Manhattan Project or whatever and stuff like that. But that's one weapon of war that throughout my my time I remember a lot of the drills or what little things like that going through all the fear of that but not as much as it I was younger back then and it didn't really sink in but nowadays it's a deterrent but it's a weapon that I, I don't think should ever be used again and you'll see some postcards of memorials from that on there Let's go ahead and get started with the history of atomic bombs. And I'm going to show you some postcards. I got a little bit, I threw some extra ones in here, so it might, might go a little faster to get them, get them done. But I just found a lot of them out there that were pretty neat, and I wanted to make sure I got them in there. So remember, you can pause on YouTube. The history of atomic bomb is fascinating and sobering chapter in human history. It all began during World War II when scientists from the United States the United Kingdom and Canada collaborated on a top secret project known as the Manhattan Project. Their goal was to develop a powerful weapon that could bring an end to the war in, 19, 
and in 1945 they successfully tested the first atomic bomb in New Mexico. And shortly afterward, two atomic bombs were dropped on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These bombings had devastating consequences leading to the Japan's surrender and the end of World War II. The atomic bomb's development and use had far-reaching implications for global politics and warfare. It ushered in the nuclear age, with the United States and Soviet Union becoming superpowers possessing these destructive weapons. This led to the Cold War, a period of intense political and military tensions between the two superpowers. The fear of nuclear war loomed large during this time, and it prompted efforts to control and limit the spread of nuclear weapons through treaties like the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Today, the atomic bomb remains a symbol of both scientific achievement and potential for catastrophic destruction. It serves as a stark reminder of the importance of diplomacy, disarmament, and the pursuit of peaceful solutions to conflicts in order to prevent the devastating consequences that these powerful weapons can bring. The history of the atomic bomb captured on postcards reflects a journey through the 20th century's most pivotal moments. From the scenic Manhattan Project's inception to the harrowing mushroom clouds over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These postcards document the birth of a new era, fraught with both scientific marvel and devastating destruction. They serve as a visual reminders of the complex moral and political dilemmas faced during World War II and this Cold War, making them not only historical artifacts, but also powerful symbols of humanity's capacity for both innovation and destruction. Now I have one fact here that I pulled in. During the era era of the above ground nuclear testing in nearby Nevada, Las Vegas hotels, they used to test these things in the desert and they lined people up to watch them and stuff. But in Las Vegas hotels were often promoted atomic cocktails and rooftop viewing parties for tourists to watch the mushroom clouds from a safe distance, turning nuclear explosions into a unique form of entertainment. How times have changed. But you saw a lot of the postcards that I put out there, that I found. Some sold, some didn't, but I, I found those, and I tried to get all different ones. And you notice some wasn't the main subject, but a lot of it was. And there was memorials of it, too. But do these things move through the A-based system? How I do that is I have this little chart here, and I kind of go through this a little bit. because People, you got to have a system of how you pick cards and what to look for. A lot of people say, well, this is a cool card. It's going to sell. Then they get it home, and then there's so many out there, it doesn't do well. Just because it looks cool to you doesn't mean it's selling. So I, I do this little thing in my head is I keep it 0 to 3% is the lows. The QSL, the Cypress Gardens, not that they won't sell. They just don't sell as fast for a reseller. Then the average 4 to 10% is the average and high. That's where I work. That's the cards I do. I, I mainly look for the high and average. So anything that falls in those categories, I'm pretty well going to pick up. I'm going to get 4 to 5 6 $8 for it. Some of them, while I'm there, go a little higher, and they're harder to find. I do find those. But a lot of the average cards, I don't comp every, every card because I know a lot of them, and I know... They're just going to move. I'm here to move cards. So if I miss one and someone picked up a gem and get another $10, so be it. I got what I needed out of when I picked it up. I can't watch everything and get enough cards up because I need to do quantity and variety at the high and average level cards. And while I'm looking for those, you usually find the 11 plus, the very high ones. You know, the half moon real photos come in lots, the hold to the lights, the Disney, the wiki watching mermaids. A lot of this is just you know, what people want and demand. And it doesn't change as fast as people think. Just because someone comes in and starts selling postcards doesn't mean it's going to change the market. There's thousands of sellers out there selling these on eBay. Ninety Over 90% 90 of the people who sell postcards are on eBay is where it's at. That's why I moved off of the other sites and stuff. And there's 7 to 9 million postcards at any given time listed on eBay. A lot of the same ones, anywhere from $0.99 cents to $100 for the same card. You just got to be very careful. So Southern Rate helps me. And basically it's just how many cards are moving. A snapshot, not scientific, not down the last card. It's not going to help me that much with that many cards out there. It just gives me a range to know 
I have a better chance of selling that card than this card. And it's worked out for me. I sell postcards. But I take the soul. I, I went in there and I did postcard atomic bomb. Simple. And I look at I click sold and it clicks completed. Gives me a number. 54 is all all it was on there is the number it gives me. So I, I just gotta use the numbers it gives me, right? Sometimes searching eBay isn't the best. Worthpoint isn't the best. Amazon isn't the best. But it gave me 54. And then I unclick the sold and completed and I get how many are listed and I divide the sold by the listed and times it by 100 to get a percent, it's at 20%. So out of the 276 out there, 54 are sold, 20%. That's a pretty, that's a really very high sell to rate. So if you see an atomic bomb, you got a pretty good chance of it selling. Might not retirement fund, you know, gold, but they do, it's a good sell to rate. It's a good card to pick up. But you got to bump it up against other things to see if that 20% really is a number or is it just skewed up in the search and stuff like that. So I bump it up against like items. Now this isn't the whole postcard field, the sell through rate for all the postcards. This is just down to a niche topic uh, on there so it, it can change. And it's just a snapshot in time, 90 days. I don't care about two years ago or a year ago. I'm just looking at what's happening right now when I pick up this card. Just give me an idea. and They're going to sit in the box anyway. Postcards don't move as fast as people think. It, some are long tail, most are. But postcard atomic bomb was 20%. Then I just put atom. Atom bomb, atom, nuclear. There's 871 of those, 17%. Then nuclear, I use the word nuclear, postcard nuclear, in case they use that in there, 15%. So you got 20, 17, and 15. So I think the 20%, it's a very high card. I think it's this kind of vets it out a little bit that it'll it'll do well. It'll do better than the other ones. And then I put radiation just to see what people there's only five of them that use radiation at 88 listed, six percent. So that's kind of down, but I got three things there up in the 15 to 20 percent. So I would say this is a very high card. It's a good card to pick up, has a better chance of selling others. Not saying that it will sell, but it gives you something, an educated guess on picking up cards. If you go to a postcard show and there's a whole there are boxes and boxes of them and you're sitting down and you're looking through the box what are you looking at you need something to guide you to help you to learn after a while you're gonna get pretty good motel 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 RBPC you know West Virginia you just start pulling these out and pretty soon you got a nice little stack to bring home to do more research sure 10% of those might be duds or just average cards but just think of 10% of those are very high or 10, uh, the rest, 80%, are your high average ones. That's where you get into it. You can't sit and comp every card at a show and try to look it up and just guess. You, you're, it, you'll never get through the boxes. You'll never get enough quantity up to make it worthwhile to sell postcards. But that's sell to rate. But then we get into pricing. Sell to rate is not, I don't look at it as with all the promoted listings and all the little hacks out there, eBay, the stock price, all that other garbage that keeps getting thrown out at everybody. I don't work in that area. I'm just an average postcard se seller with looking for average sales, average profit on that eBay ever had. That's my goal. I'm not looking at all the stuff. It doesn't turn my boat, this ship around, that I do around. If something happens to eBay and it affects me, it, They've weathered so much. And then there are people are talking about advertising on, you know, people, eBay's not advertising and stuff. They're running a billion dollar business. They got more going out the back door than they got coming from sellers probably. The data that they get, they're selling that. They, they're they diversified. I don't tell them how to run a thing and that they should advertise. They've already done that. I don't think it would help my little postcard store if they do a commercial on. I'd rather them not spend the money and stop increasing fees so in the long run, we can keep what we got. But I have no control over that stuff, and I don't worry about it. There's nothing I can do to change somebody's mind. But we get into pricing. A lot of people price postcards. They will look and look and look until they find the price they want. So when people ask me, what do you think this postcard is worth? I'll just tell them, it's, yeah, it'll sell. I, I don't do the antique roadshow be, and price postcards for them because I'm going to do exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go through eBay, WorthPoint, Google Image, on there and, and look and see what the consistent sell of that card is. Comps are not 
you can price it any way you want, lower, higher, whatever. But if people think, say, well, this is a $30 card, it's really cool, I used to live there, they're going to go out there and they're going to look for every card, every site until they find that $30. It could have been five years ago, and they're going to put it up for $29.50, plus shipping. Because that's just what they think they that it's worth. It's not what you think, it's the numbers. So if you're looking at cards, and that's what I do here, the pricing, I have the extreme pricing first. That's when I look to eBay and different things and worth point and I try to find I throw out the real high ones and I throw out the real low ones and I kind of look for where the high high watermark is what's the highest these things sell consistently not looking for that one two thousand dollar card that's not going to change my business I want consistency so I found three that I thought were pretty good now the first one is you want to look for this I, I've had this card a couple times and I've sold it for not as much as this I think I had it up maybe 25 or 20 it's been a while but this is the Pioneer Club Casino Hotel postcard and if you look straight in the middle right in the back there there's a mushroom cloud the atomic bomb and this one sold in 2022 for $30 and that's a worth point comp it's up and down so that's a card it looks like a linen card I can't remember but it's got the mushroom cloud in the back depicting during the atomic bomb testing and stuff so that's a that's a good card to get that will sell and a lot of places miss that because that little atomic bomb next one is uh, the bikini atoll this is where they did the test out in the ocean at this island and stuff and it's a good read about what they've done did out there and the testing and stuff i mean they're blowing these things up like crazy around there I don't think people can live there anymore. I saw a documentary a while. They had some concrete dome or something. I think that was it. But 1946 Operation Crossroads, Bikini Atoll. Atoll. I think Atoll, I think what it says. Atomic Bomb Test Souvenir Postcard. It's got three people standing there. It's got a sailor, a natives, looking at this bomb test. And then this sold for $159, the best offer. So they got $159, and they shipped this thing for $12. So $150 for that card. That's not too bad. And then you got this Embassy Newsreel Theater New York postcard, Atomic Bomb. It's a postcard, and I put it here because it was a little different. Things like this catch my eye. Is there something here? Is it a reprint or whatever? But this sold for $20.50. And an Atomic Bomb Explosion. It's like a theater newsreel postcard. So I thought that was pretty cool, $20.50. So those are your extreme pricings. It, most of them are in the 20 to 50 round there, $20, but you get that 150 one in there. So there could be something out there. But then you get down the average and you bring it down to what you see every day. You're not going to find those extreme ones every day, but you buy a lot of cards, it might be in there. So you just got to keep it in the back of your mind. You can't remember every card. But just know Atomic Bombs is one you want to set to the side to do a little more research. Get a second or third look at it. So I go and I find where the consistency, where is the bubble? Not the low, not the high extreme. Where does this, what's the white lines on the road that I got to drive on to keep these cards to sell? Here's one. It's it's a postcard folder. It's those folders I don't do. I throw them in a bucket and I, I send them to a, a friend that that does well with these. They do things with them. I, I don't do a lot of these. But this one, I do a lot of military ones, or if they're special on there. I've sold some World War II with uh, stuff like that. But this one here, I I would pick up. This is a folder, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, Atomic Bomb Plant. It's where they built these things. You'll, and you saw some postcards of the Oak Ridge thing. They built the whole city to build it, I guess, if I remember right. Uh, souvenir postcard folder so for, for three bids for $15. That's one of the higher folders I've seen. Then you get these memorial ones, and it's kind of sad that things happen like that in war, the fog of war and stuff. Things happen, and, and it's terrible. Atomic A-bomb scene dome Hiroshima, Jap Japan Japanese postcard. See, a title doesn't just roll off. Atomic A-bomb... I don't do all that keyword stuff. I would have just put Japanese memorial for the atomic bomb on whatever is what I would try to do some English in there. But $20. 
and they shipped it for three forty nine. dollars So you'll see a lot of those Memorial Japanese cards, the chrome ones. And then you got the Cold War era, 60s, atomic bomb test, Nevada, probably sedan, continental size postcard. That's a lot in that title. And a lot of keywords. I, I would put the subject of what it is in there first, and then if you want to keyword stuff to fill up your things. A lot of people do that. I, it's not a right or wrong thing. I don't do it um, in there, but it's got continental size. Let them get into your listing to see what size it is. I, I don't do that. So if someone doesn't want a continental card, they're not even going to look at it. But if they get in there and they get a closer look at the better scan picture and stuff, they might hit the buy button. Remember, it's impressions when it's on the search page. They click on it, that's a view, and then if they hit the buy button, pay for it, that's a conversion. You might be stopping people from getting into the view part where that's the only place you see buy it now or buy button is once they get into the listing. They don't see it. Why explain to them on the search page what it is? Let them get into the listing and then little buttons right up to the top there. That's the way I think. But this one went for 10 maybe ten, eleven dollars, ten, nine dollars. They took an offer on it and shipped it for two dollars, but it's a bunch of people looking at those test sites. So Atomic Bomb is it's not controversial. It's out there. It's been there for years. People marketing has used it here. I don't think it would be different time in our world and our lives than it is today. Right now, we have a lot of things going on in the world and a lot of threats and stuff and a lot of saber rattling and stuff like that. So hopefully everything comes out okay. But that's life. Now, if you see these atomic bombs and you sell some good ones, try to send them in to SM Postcards at contactasmpostcards.com and let us know how you did and I'll use them on the show and tell. I think I got my bucket cleared out again. Some of the stuff I get I can't really use, but a lot of it I did stories or what they've done and stuff like that so if you got anything like this that you sold real well or know a lot about it or got a collection you're set up in your office send it in to contact us and I'll, I'll share it with folks We, I, not just what I do I could be doing it totally wrong what other people do that's how I learn and that's how people share and plus if you spend a lot of time on stuff you want to share what you do if you're good at it and you got something good not, it's not going to hurt the competition. It just makes everybody better and they better price their cards. Competition is so large, this market. and it, We need to get more people in the hobby. That's Atomic Bomb. Who knew? We're going to get into the poll. I send out a poll every Saturday. It's just in the community tab. If you subscribe, you know, make sure you subscribe. Hit the little bell thing and there's a little thing in the corner. Best, easiest free thing you can do for the channel is you will should be notified when these come out but every Saturday between 9 a.m. 10 a.m. central around there I, I put a poll out and it, it's just a vote yes no or something like that if you vote on it and don't put a comment I have no idea it just shows the numbers like you see if you put a comment everybody can see your name and what you comment and don't worry uh, comments are fine but I do treat them as public and I could use them in a video if you want to send me something more private you can send it to contact at and I'll reply if I yeah, I know if I want to use it in a video or I think it'd be good I'll ask <laughs> ask you most people said yes but this one was how do you prepare your eBay shipping labels there's different ways to do it, and there's different reasons why people do it. The first one I did was thermal printer, and then I did the old way print, cut, and tape to a box where you print it on a printer, and then you tape the label on. Do you handwrite them, the address and stuff? Do you, or do you buy postage at the post office? Worst thing you can do, or other. And yeah, some people hit other. So thermal printer was the top one, thermal printers. It's a goal. Scanners and thermal printers, if you're going to do postcards and get into it and make that expenditure and get it set up, the scanner, everybody told me, is their best piece of equipment they couldn't do out with, a duplex scanner. And I've done videos on those. The second thing was their thermal printers. Those were the two main pieces of equipment. And I would say one of these little things, they're little lights, little loops that you can look at the cards too is a, is a good thing on there but I this is talking about the labels then 23% said they still print it out cut 
the label and put it on there. With the volume I do, or if anybody's selling a good amount of cards, that would just be so tedious. So if you get to a level and you do volume, you're going to not want to do that. I don't care who you are. If you want to sit there for hours and do that, it just gets old. That's it, it, how I feel. That's 23%. Then 4% still handwrite them. Maybe those are hobbyists. They just sell a few here and there. And then buy postage to post office. I'm, I'm glad I see this zero. Do not take your stuff for eBay. You don't get the discount. You walk up to that counter, you're paying retail rates. You ship it in eBay, Pirate Ship, or whatever, you're paying commercial rates, which is a lot lower. They don't want you going to the counter. They would rather have you just put a box into the system that's already. They don't want to pay someone to do that. And then the other, that's 4%. But I got some comments here, and I think this will clear up what I was saying about reasons why. So the first one is from Bears Mom 42 Old printer, haven't made the move to thermal yet. Yeah, so they're waiting to get there to, to move to it a thermal printer it's on their list now there's some ways to do that one of them was during the holidays I always watch thermal printers for sales and sometimes I, I'll put them on my watch list on Amazon or whatever I picked up this one this is an I, IDPRT I'm gonna do a video on it I gotta see how it goes because I have a Rolo I've had for six to eight years five I don't know how long I've got it but I wanted wanted to get one way back when and my wife had and kids asked me what they want I said I want a thermal printer for well, my wife picked up the Rolo not saying it's a, the best brand in the world there's Zebra there's a Dymo I don't fight technology it, the technology for the thermal stuff and stuff like that it's just branding so they all it, it's the same technology but I got a Rolo and it works fine I don't have any problems with it at all I never have but I was thinking maybe I'm going to because it's getting older, but it'll probably run forever. But this, you know how much I paid for this? This thermal printer that will do four by six labels is usually like $150. I paid $60 for it. Free shipping from Amazon. $60 for a thermal printer. So I'm gonna set this up, do a video, see how this IDPRT works and let it run and do some labels on it and I'll have a backup to my thermal printer for $60. I mean, it, that's way down on the price of a new Rolo or a Zebra or some of the ones. So you can find deals out there. You just gotta watch, but if you got a birthday coming up, if you got a whole bunch of stuff, ask for Amazon cards or ask for a thermal printer and tell them which one you want. Cause they'll go out and get some really cheap one. There's some cheap ones out there, but if you want a wireless one, mine isn't wireless. Cause I, I can plug it, it's right below me here and it's connected to my computer with USB. This one isn't wireless either. I think it's Bluetooth though. I haven't really dug into it yet. But you can find those. So if you're thinking about getting one, get the word out there. People will give you gift cards and stuff and move there. And scanners, that's another one. If you want a scanner, start asking people, tell people what you want for holidays. That's the best way to do it. But thanks, Bears Mom. And then Philip Biderbeck. He uses a HP all-in-one printer I have a Canon one like that, has a scanner and all that stuff on it, with four to a page labels for UPS Ground Advantage or eBay SE. Yeah, I used to use that years ago before I had a thermal printer, because I'd get the things and you peel them off. Since I got a lot of old stamps cheap, I often use them for, for sales under $50 with a standard 5160 address label printed on HP. So he's running through, why spend the money if you got all this stuff and you want to do that and you got the time, use up your old stamps or whatever like that, it's fine. But if you're selling a lot of stuff and you want time back, time is money, thermal printers are, but he's got a plan and he's still, it's okay for him to do that. That's what he wants to do. But if you get into volume, you're going to want to change no matter how many stamps or whatever on there. Thanks, Philip. Then Jungle Man 49, I love my Rolo printer. So do I. I, I it, it's flawed. I never have a problem with it. I just make sure I wipe it off every once in a while. I've had it over three years now. No problems. I just hit print and it's done before I can reach to tear it off. Exactly. Then I peel off the backing, stick it to the package or envelope. Quick, easy, reliable. Yeah, it's print, peel, and stick. You don't have to write everything, make sure you get the address right, do a label, put a stamp on it. Before eBay standard envelope, I would go out, 
beginning of the month buy $400 rolls of labels or I go to the post office. A lot of times I just order from UPS.com. I pay the little surcharge. It just comes to the house. And you have to float that money. So my granddaughter would help me out a lot and she would take and she would put the stamp on the envelope and I have a little return address here and every time I sold the postcard I had to cut and paste on a Dymo label and put it here is what I did. Well she would do a hundred postcards at a time for me when she'd come over and stuff and I would buy her a box of cupcakes. So she helped me out there and sometimes I didn't have enough of them I'd have to do them myself. It was just a tedious thing. With eBay standard envelope the first thing it does is I don't need to upfront any shipping. I don't have to buy $400 worth of stamps every month. I, I pay shipping when it sells. Two, there's no pre-doing envelopes anymore. It, it just print, peel and stick. That's what it did. It really saved a lot of time and everything. Everything's right on there. And it has a little bit of tracking. Not as robust as package, but it gives us more than what we had before. So I agree with you, Jungle. Thanks. Then Amy, I intend to invest in a thermal printer as soon as I can justify more sales. Yeah, when you first start off, don't jump in and spend a lot of money if you're not for sure this is what you want to do. Because you're going to end up reselling your scanner and stuff for lower price on eBay. But get a plan and figure out what you want to do once you start selling five, six, ten cards a day or where you want to be in a field and you want to save time, plan out and put some money away for that. She's thinking the right way, I think. I intend to invest in a thermal printer app as soon as I can justify it with more sales. I am convinced in the convinced is the most cost efficient method to print labels, absolutely. But just starting selling postcards a month ago, need to save up. Yeah. Let your business grow. There's growing pains. Now, if you got the money and you're going to jump into it and this is what you want to do, oh, just sold the postcard. That's what you need to do to get a thermal printer. This is the 428, so I sent an offer, 10% offer, 475 to 428. It's the scenic highway in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. So I, I'm $4.28 closer to my next purchase. But, but when you first start out, don't dump a lot of money into it if you're not for sure. Postcards can be a great filler. If you're selling clothes, toys, or whatever, and you want to find add some postcards in over time, it, it's a great filler. I used it for toys. Postcards are pretty consistent once you get up to a certain number. Thanks, Amy. Then Julie Flicka says, yeah, I'm pretty old school. Print, cut, and tape, though I do print on envelopes when I can. That can be tedious as well, putting them in there, line them up, and do all this stuff. I think Julie sells a lot of postcards. She, she's in here a lot. Check out thermal printers in your next step. It'll, it'll save you a lot of time. But if you got time on your hands and this is what you want to do and you don't sell a lot, don't put the expenditure out. Why, why do that? It just brings up a cost, but time is money. But if you, it, like me being retired, that's all I got is time. I can't sell 16 cards a day that I want to do this year and stand here every morning cutting stuff out and taping it. I think it looks more professional with the eBay standard envelope. A better presentation is also what it gives you. Thanks, Julie. Then Grammy Miniatures. I print on regular printer using sticky label paper, then I cut the label out and stick it on the envelope. It's a little time consuming, but not bad. She's good with it. But check a thermal printer is your next thing to go forward. But if you don't sell a lot and you're happy with the way you're doing it, you got a system, keep doing it. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It just makes it easier as you go down the road. So that it's a goal. I tell people a scanner, thermal printer, and move forward and just get little tools for your business productivity wise. And then premium postcards. I do not think I really need one. But then I saw a great deal on eBay on an open box Josie thermal printer and decided to take a chance. So he curious. He's experimenting. That's how things happen. Have had it for over a year, works great, and I cannot imagine ever going back to cut and paste. Yeah, once you go to a thermal printer, you're going to say, why didn't I do this before? So everybody's out there cutting and pasting and doesn't want to make that leap. Most people that do say, why did I do that for so long? This is what people are telling me, not just me. There's no right or wrong way, but people that go to thermal printer, they look back and say, why did I do that for so long? I hear that a lot. You don't need a high dollar printer. Some of the cheaper options work as well. Look for deals. Look for used ones at garage sales. You can find things. Go out there and study up on thermal printers and ask questions in here of people. 
Anybody that does any kind of shipping at home has thermal printers. Any kind of reseller with volume definitely has a thermal printer and stuff. But you got any questions about this or what type do you use out there? I was going to do a poll later on to use the Dymo and Zebra and stuff. I do that every year just to see what out there. I have a Rolo and I have an ID PRT one now, iPrint, ID Print, whatever it is. And we'll see how they work. Thanks everyone for participating and I'll keep putting these out. If you got any questions for a poll, send them into contact.smosart.com. I'll take a look at it. Might reword it a little bit if you want your answers in there and I'll, I'll slide it in. I'm trying to get more viewers sending them in for polls, what you want instead of just me doing it. So just send it in, it'd be great. Thanks. Now we're gonna get into viewer comments. I got four comments here. I get a lot of comments in email. Please don't try to send anything in eBay. I can't reply to you as well because I can't put links and all that other stuff in there. Hit me up on a comment on YouTube. And if I want, need to send you screenshots, whatever, I'll ask you to send me a message in the email. But if you send it in email, it's a little bit, it's more private. I won't use it in the videos unless I ask or I prayer for, I cut it out and cut your name out and stuff like that. For, for example, so people can learn. If you got any questions, I, I try to get back to everybody. If I missed you, please send it again. I'm pretty good about getting back, so I think I got everybody. But the comments here, Three Wheeler says, after selling hundreds of postcards that are over 100 years old, the condition is not important as the content or topic, especially you have the only one. That was that one little short video I did about that one card that had a lot of, there was, the condition wasn't a good, so it wasn't at the top range of the comps. I saw, so I moved it down a little bit to the bottom. But he said, yeah, condition, this isn't, isn't like, selling postcards isn't like describing every little stain and stuff like you went on a shirt or a piece of something else that you sell on eBay. These were made to be mailed, and any kind of stains or blemishes and stuff like that, it's just a history of the card. And they'll still sell it. It's basically the subject of the card. Like he was saying, it's the topic of the card is what sells. So don't Consider conditions the only stop it there. You might have to drop it down a little bit, but if you explain a little bit about it, but I wouldn't go in real wordy about it because people do expect them to have writing in the front, back, and stamp on it, and it's been mailed. Thanks, Ray. Then Don said, if you have been shipping long enough with the U.S. Post Office, you'll find that what one postmaster tells you and or accepts at their post office is not always the same at a different post office. Nope. You go into one, right? When I worked in a I was a district manager for a chain restaurant, and I went all over the United States. We had them they're nationwide. We try, wherever you go, the soup should be the same everywhere. And that was one of the criteria of my job, is to make sure everything was consistent on there. And I just, did they pay? And I just sold uh, another another Cape Cod postcard for five sixty five. So that's two cards sold on the video. But we try to stay consistent on there. So the post offices have the same problems. When you get humans involved, they interpret things wrong and stuff like that. People get put into jobs maybe they're not ready for or they don't keep up with stuff. So I thought I would see if any of you or any of your viewers could give me some feedback. So he's asking for some feedback from us. I sell both postcards and postal history covers. So it's not uncommon for me to get an order for multiple items. Whenever possible, I use my Rolo thermal printer to print the 4x6 eBay standard envelope, but on a lot of my multiple items, orders, the thickness of the envelope goes over the quarter inch limit, but the weight stays under three ounces. I've had that as well when I get too many cards and stuff like that. My response to them was, is I'll take, if I sell nine cards, Sometimes and I, and they paid eBay standard envelope whatever I've done I don't do it often but I I've done it is I'll put four in this one and five in this one make this one ounce two ounce and I'll do two separate envelopes two separate labels I uh, just purchased another label and I'll sell it for, instead of ground advantage five dollars I did it for a dollar or thirty or whatever and then I just send a message to the buyer hey you're gonna get two envelopes they usually if you put both of these in the mail they're probably gonna show up at the same time. You can even put a little sticker on it that says envelope one of two, two of two. And they'll get it and you'll have a little eBay insurance you know, tracking number for, on each one. That's how I would do it. Otherwise, if they buy a lot of stuff, sometimes I'll just bump it to ground advantage and send it on and I'll eat the $3. Because they, they, they bought a lot. 
It's just in there. But does anybody else do that with multiple orders that go over eBay standard envelope? What, what would be your suggestions for Don? Just stick it in the comments or reply to his message. Thanks. Thanks, Don. Then happy bunny. Thanks, Mark. Always interesting videos. Thank you. I try to come up with weird topics. Do you happen to know if sending out a 10% offer and having that accepted would void would void any buy three get one free type of offers like the volume discounts and stuff like that that card is set up for? I'm wondering if the buyer can get either one or the other, but not both. This will impact my pricing as I would have to allow for a double hit if both types of types of offer can be applied at the same time. Now that they call it stacking, I think stacking of offers and stuff. I'm not really up on that. I told her so. There's some stuff in eBay help, but if anybody has any help here for Happy Bunny, also just like with Don, is it stackable? So if I send a offer for 10 percent and then check out, do they still get the buying price? And if they buy four items, to me, I would think they would because you're just bringing the price of the card, and then in the checkout, they'll see that it's buying price and if it's under there. But let me know if anybody gets into that stack. Well, I'm not that concerned about it. Most of my cards sell are single cards or two cards. My volume discounts, really, the 15% kicks in. I think it's four plus cards. But it's all figured into my pricing. And I have free shipping and stuff. So if they have three cards, I put it in one envelope. I still make, make the difference up a little bit there. But if anybody knows how they stack, you know, if you send a... So let me get this right. I sent a 10% offer on a $5 card. So now, our 475 card, now they get it for 428 and they got 10% off, and they bought five other cards. It kicks in my volume discount at checkout. Do they get that as well? I would think they would, but I, I haven't investigated it. So if anybody out there can help Happy, it would be great. Thanks, Happy. Then Ashley, this is one of the reasons, probably one of the most important reasons, why people buy postcards. And one of the reasons I sell a lot of Navy ship cards. Ashley said, cool, the ship cards that sold during your video, so I showed a lot of cards that sold on one video, were the ones she bought. Yes, I remember that, Ashley, in the message you sent. Thank you for the purchase. Those were ships that my late father served on, and I bought those cards to show my family over the holidays. I sell a lot of multiple cards during the holidays, the ship cards for sure, but I, I, I've had this type of comment many 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 times on those ship cards those naval ship cards was a nice way to remember my dad we passed the cards around during our Christmas dinner thanks Mark Ashley at mailbox memories postcards that just makes my day Ashley and everybody when I can send a card out that brings up memories to people I send a lot of stuff to people and they'll tell me stories about the naval ships and I'll, I'll probably go back and see if I can find some and maybe I'll put them in the community tab of what people say. I, I've sold those naval ship covers, and, the, and, and I'll have a date of 1946 on there. And the guy will come up and the person will say, I was on that ship during that time. I probably stamped this envelope. How neat is that? Or another person would say, they'll tell me a history about them. We'll go back and forth about their, their naval time and stuff. And one person was uh, in a retirement home. And he doesn't get a lot of mail. His family comes over. He was t just telling me a story. We're going back and forth. And he bought like 12 cards. And the reason he bought 12 is he's going to keep two, but only 10 of the people he know are still able, you know, still alive from the time of the war. And he was going to send each one with their with the card for Christmas from uh, the retirement home and his wife are in now. And it just, he said it brought great memories back of where, how he met his wife, the war, and stuff. And not mem great memories of the war, but during that time, some of the things that happened. So that's why a lot of people will buy and pay up on postcards, is that little topic there kicked off some. Like when I'm listening to the radio and I hear a song from Mario Speedwagon or Journey or Rush, that was Foreigner. That was during my time. I'll think about something. And that's what postcards do. Or people moved away from their houses. So use that type of energy when you do your postcard listings. Is what I try. Atomic bomb postcards? Grab them. The, 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 what all my analytics here tells you, they, they'll better chance of selling those than a bush in Grand Canyon for sure.
But if you got any, send them in. Look into those thermal printers. Birthdays. Amazon cards. Save up for it. It will change the way you do things. And you're going to wonder, why didn't I do this before? How many times in our life did we said that? But that's all I got for today. Appreciate everybody watching. And I'll catch you in the next one. Here's some more fish to take a look at. Bye.